What's up guys, this is Brandon at Tailwater Outfitters. Today we're going to be doing a fly tying video uh, on the redfish gotcha you can see. Kind of a small shrimpy pattern. Um, it's really nice for bouncing out of like a grassy area uh, in front of a redfish and it just kind of pops up out of the grass nice and easy. Uh, and a lot of times that fish will come eat it. So we'll get started here. So we'll start with the uh, Daiichi 2546 size 4. Uh, you can tie this in a 4 or 6. It doesn't really matter, just kind of, kind of depends on how big you want the fly to be uh, and how, uh, how you want to target that fish. So we'll start kind of uh, just behind the eye of the hook. I'll go 6 or 7 wraps uh, before we add in our Chacon's Stealth B-Chain Eyes. I've got some olive eyes here that we're, we're going to add in. Uh, you want to give yourself plenty of room uh, on the front side of that hook because you are going to be adding that craft fur uh, and a weed guard on the front side. You want to make sure you have plenty of room to tie that in. So let me get those eyes going on here. Once I get them nice and snug, I'm going to wrap back to about the barb of the hook. You can see kind of right here where that barb of the hook is. Uh, and I'll add a dab of add a dab of fly finish onto my eyes <clears throat> to make sure they stay in place. Next we are going to add let me see where my package is, some UV polar chenille in copper. I'm going to tie that in right on the back of the hook. Make sure I pull all these flashy fibers back. We want them laying kind of on the back, almost like a tail uh, for the fly. And I'll wrap right up to that hook point there. Grab my hackle pliers. And we're going to give it about four turns of this flash, three to four turns, just depending on how, you, how flashy you want that fly to be. So I'll get four turns in there. We'll capture this by parachuting that thread over. Once I've got my material captured on the hook, I'm going to pull everything back and give it about three or four good turns in front of that flash, and you can cut the excess out. Once I got that, you'll see it's kind of messy here. Uh, so I'm going to pull everything back, laying how I want it to. Make sure you pull those fibers off the hook. Uh, and I'll give a couple of wraps backwards onto that so those flash fibers lay nice and flat on the back of the hook like that, just how you want them to. <clears throat> Next we're going to work on the body of the fly. This is minnow head uh, in the copper color, or bronze color, excuse me, bronze. I'm going to wrap this in and we're going to palmer this minnow head in all the way to the front of the hook. So we'll give it about three good wraps. You want to be kind of sparse with this minnow head because it's a, a thicker brush from EP so it's not like foxy brush. It actually palmers in pretty well and you're going to get a nice thick body out of this. So you should get probably five to six wraps behind the hook or behind the eyes. <clears throat> and then I like to go two or three wraps or so in front of the eyes just to kind of finish off that shrimpy body. Once you get your third wrap, you can capture that. And again, just like that flash, I'm going to pull everything back and give about three or four wraps in front. And cut that out with your bad scissors there. <clears throat> Next, you should have something kind of messy looking like this. Uh, this actually kind of looks like it might be a good like bay fish pattern fly, uh, but we're going to trim this up quite a bit. So you want to pick this out with your comb or your bobbin, or whatever you have to pick out the fiber with. Got a little beard comb I got from a. Clipper said from Publix, it works pretty well. 
Um, so obviously this is kind of big for a shrimp pattern. Um, so we're going to cut quite a bit of this off. So I'm going to pull basically all that minnow head up away from the flash. Uh, and I'm going to angle kind of like a 45 degree angle straight from the eyes. I'm going to cut back and kind of round it so you get like a bigger shrimp body in the back. Uh, and I'm going to do that on all four sides of the hook. I like to save the top of the shrimp body for last because basically what you're going to do is put some craft fur on top of that so you can cut that actually almost flush with the hook. Um, I like to leave just a little bit for a body but you don't need a lot on the top. So you should, once you trim this minnow head, end up with something looks kind of almost like a, a small minnow fly again. And next we're going to add our craft fur onto the front. So I'm going to take uh, this olive or olive brownish craft fur. I'm going to get about four good cuts into it. Pull that out. Should have kind of something that looks a little bit like that. I'm going to pull all that under fur out uh, and you can use your comb as well. And then on the front side of this craft fur, let's see if I can get it in front of the camera, you're going to pull a lot of these longer fibers out uh, because you really don't want the, the body of your shrimp to be too long on the outside of the hook. <clears throat> so once I get my craft fur looking kind of how I want it, I'm going to take it I'm going to lay it just on this side of the hook because once I wrap over it, uh, that craft fur will actually end up right on top of the hook just like I want it to. Um, and I'll make my craft fur kind of level with the flash thereabouts when I pull that over. Um, when you wrap this craft fur in, you want to be kind of as close to the eyes as possible so you give yourself plenty of room to cut out that under fur on the front of the hook. And you can kind of pull back nice and tight there and I'm going to make sure I trim this up so that you got room to put in your weed guard at the end of this. Um, once you do that, you can kind of roll this craft fur out. I like to put stripes in mine. Um, you'll see kind of, you know, a lot of stuff that redfish eat, pinfish, shrimp. How you doing? Oh, that was awesome. Craft fur came out. Take two on the craft fur. So I'll make sure I wrap this craft fur in nice and tight this time. There we go, that's not coming out. So you make sure you get that under fur enough that when you wrap over that hook guy there that you still have plenty of room to put your, put your line through to actually tie onto your leader. Uh, and again, we're going to give this three stripes. You can add more stripes or less stripes just depending on what you want. Um, but shrimp, pinfish, a lot of things that redfish really like to eat, especially in the fall and winter time, do have stripes on them. So I like to add those stripes in on the fly. There we go. Once you get that done, you're actually pretty much done with the fly. Um, I like to put a weed guard in mine because like I said earlier, when you fish this, uh, this fly works really well for when you're bouncing it out of grass. Um, or on a bottom where those fish are kind of looking for stuff on the bottom in between the grass or potholes or whatever. Um, so I'm going to add a 25 pound um, weed guard to it so you can kind of pull this craft fur back on the hook. It's going to sit like that anyway. Um, and when you tie in your weed guard, it's a lot easier if you kind of lick your fingers and pull those fibers back so they sit uh, on the hook just how you want them. I'm going to add this weed guard just in front of the eyes, just about in the same spot I did my craft fur. Uh, and I'm going to wrap this down really tight. So I tie basically all my flies with uh, the heaviest thread that we sell here, which is the flat wax nylon, um, so that you can pull down really tight on these, uh, whether you're doing deer hair or the weed guard or whatever it is that you're doing. I'm just going to kind of clean this up on the front so that it looks kind of decent at least. Uh, and then you'll pull your weed guard out front over the craft fur and I'll parachute my thread four or five times so that weed guard kind of sits out in front of the hook. 
should sit up kind of straight like that. You can give it a couple more wraps if you want. It just kind of depends on how you fish. Once I do that, I'll trim the weed guard to just past the hook point and whip finish. And you whip finish behind the weed guard again just so you kind of pop that weed guard up. Make sure your thread sits nice and pretty behind it. Uh, any fibers that are kind of sitting awkward on this fly, you can just pull out now where you put that glue on because if it sits awkward now, it's going to sit awkward later. Uh, and it's just going to bug you when you're throwing the fly. I'm going to finish with my UV flow. Uh, make sure I cover this thread up really well. finish with my UV light and that is your redfish gotcha fly right there